Want to learn what breast cancer is and what it means? We will teach you all about it. If you've been diagnosed with breast cancer, you're likely to have an invasive breast cancer, which amounts to about 80% of things we call breast cancer. 20% is a precancerous condition called DCIS, which we cover in detail at our DCIS lesson at the Breast Cancer School for Patients. Invasive means the cancer cells in the tumor of your breast potentially have the ability to spread beyond the breast to other parts of the body and threaten you. But be reassured, the threat to you is generally less than you think. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about the different types of invasive breast cancer. I'm going to review with you what the threat to your life is when you have an invasive breast cancer. I'm also going to go over how it's treated and the timeline for treatment. I'm going to tell you why you must know your breast cancer tumor receptors and why they're so important. And also, if you qualify, I'm going to share with you why BRCA genetic testing, the breast cancer gene, is important in your breast cancer treatment. So let's get started. First, I want to give you some important facts about breast cancer. First of all, treatments today cure 90% of all people with breast cancer. Luckily, the majority of those diagnosed with breast cancer are diagnosed at an early stage when it's easier to treat and the outcomes are excellent. There are a few people that are diagnosed at a later stage, but in general, people do well. You generally have time, time to step back and make decisions about your surgery, make good decisions about chemotherapy or hormonal therapy or radiation therapy. So remember, in most cases, time is on your side. And lastly, breast cancer is complicated. And so the more that you know about breast cancer in general, and specifically about your breast cancer, the better treatment decisions you will make for yourself. What are the different types of invasive breast cancer? Well, the most common type of invasive breast cancer, 70% are an invasive ductal carcinoma and it's treated the same way in general as the second most common cancer cell type called invasive lobular carcinoma, which accounts for about 20% of all breast cancers. You don't really need to think so much of whether it's in the duct or in the lobules. We don't really think about it from a treatment perspective, but the two are generally treated alike. I'm gonna to pivot to a couple of other what we call types, inflammatory breast cancer occurs in about 5% of all women with breast cancer. And it's a very threatening breast cancer. It can grow large in the breast, involve the skin and the lymph nodes, and it's a real threat. And we treat it very aggressively. A type of breast cancer in a different way is a receptor type. Estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, HER2 receptor. So remember this, know whether you are HER2 positive. That accounts for about 20% 20, 20 of breast cancers. Or whether you are triple negative, which accounts for about 15% of breast cancers. Both of them invariably need chemotherapy if someone's healthy enough to take it. So you can learn more about all these topics at the Breast Cancer School for Patients. We have specific lessons on tumor receptors, HER2 positive, triple negative, your pathology reports, and much more. So, be informed about your invasive breast cancer, and the more you know, the better care you will get. So what is the threat to my life of my breast cancer? I'm sure you've thought about it, and do you want to know? Well, interestingly, most women are unaware of the specific threat to their life for their unique breast cancer situation. Remember, everyone's a little different. And there are a lot of reasons for this. You are diagnosed with breast cancer, you visit a surgeon, you find out how large the tumor is, is it in your can is the cancer in your lymph nodes, has it gone elsewhere? Sometimes we don't know this information until after surgery. What are my receptors? What does all that stuff mean? So it takes us a while to really narrow down in a general way to tell you what the threat is. But if you want to know, make sure to engage your doctors. What is my survival in five years? You know, doctors on their own will sort of tip you toe around the subject not comfortable that you really want to know that information. So if you do, ask. 
But when you ask, we talk about survival, and let me explain it to you. Survival means being alive at a time period from your cancer. So at five years survival, and there's different terms, being alive and without cancer, being alive maybe with cancer, but still alive. But overall, the survival for breast cancer is 89 to 90% at five years. Very reassuring. The survival rate in general for stage one, early st very early stage breast cancer is 95 to 98%. And stage four, metastatic disease is going elsewhere, is much lower, and it really depends upon the unique situation of the person. But be reassured, 70% of all women diagnosed are diagnosed with stage one or stage two early stage breast cancer. To learn more about survival and to be able to narrow down for you maybe what it means to you, take our free video lesson on Will I Survive? cancer. Why are tumor receptors so important with invasive breast cancer? Well, your care is generally guided in many ways by the three receptors that we test on your cancer cells. So, you undergo a breast biopsy, they put a needle into the tumor, look at it on the microscope, call you, tell you you have a breast cancer, an invasive breast cancer. Then the pathologist, once they know it's a cancer, will run test on the cancer cells to look for three receptors, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2 receptor. The way to think about receptors, if you think of just a single cancer cell, they're like little light switches that turn the cancer cell on to grow, more so divide. Once if you turn it on, cells divide quickly, the tumor grows. But we have ways to turn those switches off to either stop the growth or to kill the cancer cells. So if you have an estrogen receptor positive tumor, you certainly are gonna benefit from hormonal therapy, estrogen blocking medications such as tamoxifen or a class of drugs called aromatase inhibitors. If you have a HER2 positive breast cancer, you are likely gonna benefit from chemotherapy paired with targeted immunotherapy, which is a huge advance at curing women with HER2 positive breast cancer. If you have a triple negative breast cancer, you're certainly gonna benefit from chemotherapy because it is also an aggressive cancer. To learn more about receptors and what they mean, take our video lessons on pathology reports, tumor receptors, HER2 positive breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer. To learn more, to make sure that you understand tumor receptors to make the very best treatment decisions with your breast specialist. So how is breast cancer treated? And what's the timeline for the different treatments? Well, this is obviously a complicated overall subject, but I'm gonna walk you through a few situations. So, the most common situation, 70% of patients have early stage breast cancer. It doesn't apply to all, but most. You undergo a biopsy, figure out you have cancer, you visit a breast surgeon. Most of the time we do surgery first before considering chemotherapy and hormonal therapy. So when you see your surgeon, you generally have a choice to make and two things to accomplish. Number one, get the tumor out of the breast. And number two, check some lymph nodes underneath the arm, either to remove them if they're cancerous, most of the time they're not, or do a sentinel node biopsy just to make sure there's no cancer there. So that's either a lumpectomy, remove the tumor from the breast, keep the breast, or a mastectomy, which is removing the breast with or without breast reconstruction. And if you have a lumpectomy, remove the tumor, you generally need some radiation to the breast, but you still have that part of your body. Moving on, beyond surgery, you visit with a medical oncologist, who is the way to think about it, the doctor that treats you with either hormonal therapy, generally pills, or chemotherapy, or both. And so you have to make a decision with your medical oncologist whether or not you benefit from chemotherapy or not, you're interested in pursuing it, or whether you don't benefit at all, and then where are you going from there? If you had a lumpectomy and you need radiation, you then, after you make that decision, chemo or no chemotherapy, you visit with the radiation oncologist, generally after a lumpectomy. And then you and the radiation doctor decide if you're gonna pursue radiation. And if you needed chemotherapy, you would have done chemotherapy before you do radiation. But if you just need hormonal therapy, you generally go from medical oncologist to the radiation oncologist, do four to six weeks of radiation, and then start your hormonal therapy. So 
Breast cancer is incredibly complicated. It's one of the most complicated things in cancer care and in healthcare in general. And walk through our medical oncology course for all the different topics so you can learn more on whether you need chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, genomic assays, all of these things. If I have breast cancer, invasive breast cancer, am I at risk for carrying the BRCA mutation, the breast cancer gene? Well, most women who are diagnosed with breast cancer do not have the BRCA mutation. 90% don't. But about 10% may have that mutation or another cancer-causing mutation. So the way we approach this is that if you're diagnosed with breast cancer, you need to engage your doctor to ask them, if, do you have enough risk factors for the BRCA mutation to warrant getting genetic testing, which is usually a blood test or saliva test. So let me give you two vastly different situations. Let's say you're 75. No one in your family has a history of breast cancer or ovarian cancer. You are not going to qualify for BRCA testing because you are at a very low risk for having it. But let's take the opposite. Let's say you are 35 and you're diagnosed with breast cancer at that very young age and your mother had breast cancer at 40, and your grandmother had ovarian cancer, and two of your aunts had cancer. Those are lots of risk factors that are red flags that meet guidelines and qualifications for BRCA testing, and there are many in between. But if you have the breast cancer gene, you carry a lifetime increased risk of developing a new breast cancer in the future, even after you've had your existing breast cancer. It doesn't make it come back as much, it just means if you still have breast tissue, you're at a higher risk. And there are a lot of things we can do to screen you or lessen your risk. It also imparts a very high lifetime risk of developing ovarian cancer. The BRCA mutation does. And unfortunately, we can't screen well for that. And it's a deadly problem. And we generally recommend getting your ovaries out once you're done having children. So engage your doctors about BRCA mutation testing and whether or not you qualify and they will counsel you about whether you are interested in pursuing it. Invasive breast cancer is the real thing. It comes in different types, sizes, stages, and presentations in very unique people. It's complicated, but that's why we created the Breast Cancer School for Patients. We recommend you learn the principles of breast cancer as organized and in the order that we present them on our website. Why? Because breast cancer treatment and diagnosis comes in a series of stages, visiting your imaging doctor and getting a mammogram, surgeon, medical oncologist, radiation oncologist. And we tell you in a quick fashion what you need to know when you visit with each of these doctors and the topics that you need to be informed about. And the more you know, the more you can engage your doctors to make sure that you are getting the very best care. To learn more about invasive breast cancer, visit the Breast Cancer School for Patients, where we actually teach you everything you need to know. We're here to help you get the best possible breast cancer care in your community. Register on our website to get our list of questions to prepare you for your next doctor visit.